probably had management and publicity like them kind of guiding you like you're kind of blind to what's happening I guess like did you make many decisions on your own to be like no I want to do this film and not this or were you kind of pushed that way well it depends how busy you are in your life mm -hmm. and I just zoned out because I was just thinking of something that <laughs> getting back to that point is that then when you don't say yes to that director or producer and you see who gets cast you say did they do that yeah did 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 they and then, you know, and then other peers I know that did make the big time, when your PR person tells you, who that was that actress, the people, it was, oh yeah, she slept with, she, on that film, to get that film, she had to sleep with both the lead actor and, and, and the director. And I just thought, oh, wow, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you know, and then I also had this boyfriend for 10 years, Mike Gormley, who was, you know, 25, he was, Vice President of Murphy Records and Vice President of A&M Records and Edge of the Police and Discovered the Bengals. Like he was just telling me like in the early days, and I didn't know this, uh, it was just understood in the industry that if there was a female that opened for a big male musician, that they were just expected to sleep with them. That was just, if you want the gig, then like it just was the way of the world. And I just said, oh, wow. I'm glad that's changing. And they just, for you're in your out. hotel room and they just knock on your door and you open it and there's like, like yeah. the guy from the band. <laughs> yeah, it's like, do you want to be successful or not? Yeah. yeah so well, luckily things have been called out a lot more about that. They, are, they have been a lot more people. called out. Well, you know, I, I'm, I, I've got till actually Monday because to make this decision to call Gloria all right on Monday about something that happened to be in Hollywood and it's trying to get the courage up. Is it worth it for me to have that kind of exposure? Do I want to? Because mm -hmm. now, I didn't even know they had a reprieve, but Gloria or Ormond, you know, you, you all these like really great actresses, before this Harvey thing opened up, mm -hmm. you did wonder, like, God, what happened to Gloria Ormond? Or you know, these just ones that they, they, they got sabotaged by Harvey, right? And so she is suing the studios that colluded in her being shut down. And, and um, that's when I found out that they've had this reprieve, that they had this, a statute of limitations, but they've opened it up again until October 31st. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I forgot to call on Friday because I was getting ready for this, but did I forget or is that mind yeah, again like getting no. in the way? So I've got till Monday and part of me says, yeah, you got to do this because you're actually helping other people because mm -hmm. when, when, then people pay more attention that it can happen. Yeah, to anybody, you know? anybody. Yeah. I feel like there's a certain power in saying the truth. Like I've had things in my life that like I kept it secret, but then the more I kept telling people, the easier it got. I'm like, no, I'm taking power away from that situation now. So yeah, yeah, it's yeah like, exactly. It's a hard decision to make though, because especially when you're going public, you're like, now I'm going to get a backlash. Now everyone's going to know my business. It's well, that's what, kind of initially you don't do it too, because you think you're going to get the backlash. Yeah. yeah. You know, you're so terrified of these people sabotaging you. But I'm older now, and I don't care. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. And but it's also such a warning for everybody, yeah. everybody to pay to pay attention. Who wants you and why? Yeah, <laughs> and for kids, and that it does happen to boys. Yeah, absolutely. Hockey. <laughs> it's a yeah, big one, boys kids. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, so <laughs> painful. Yeah. yeah. And have you found because it, you've moved back and forth between like like LA movies and Canadian yeah, and you movies. move back for like, different reasons. Like early yeah. in my career, I would move back and forth because I'd run out of money, okay? <laughs> Didn't have my green card yet, okay? So I'd come back here and work again, and I kept going down. It would cost a fortune because it was days before the internet. So you, you know, here now you could like, you know, look for sublets and roommates online, but mm. they, you didn't have that. So I ended up seeing motels and hotels and eating out. So it was super expensive. And then you move back because you just miss your family and friends. So you didn't come during the summer and at Christmas. So, and the, the reasons, change why you keep going back and forth yeah yeah and is there a difference do you find between productions like hollywood productions and like ontario productions this makes me want to cry now too because yeah. <laughs> had i done all the movies that i did up here in los angeles i'd be in a way different place financially yeah. and i wouldn't be as hurt because it takes a piece of your soul every time as an artist when you don't get paid by the producer or the director and they lie you say oh yeah. oh yeah it's being released everywhere it's like number two next to et in japan but you know, we're still trying to recoup the money, you know, and that would never happen with Screen Actors Guild. Like, this was the wild, wild west, and actor is not really a union, it's, it's, it's a, what do they call it? Because it's a, an alliance, and because the actors up here are not considered employees, so they can't be a real union. And also, there's just a different culture that, 
Screen Actors Guild, you, you, you're taught down there. You stand up for your rights, like Americans just do. They just stand up for their rights. Yeah. And here people are more accommodating. There's that whole British influence of, you know, just just do what you're told and be nice and everything else. And I'm a lot more uh, aggressive now in, 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 uh, in yeah, I'm a lot more aggressive <laughs> in, in business. And, you know, I, I, I've had agents tell me, oh, you better not, like, report that they're doing that yeah. because you'll never work again. <laughs> You're never going to work again. You, you better not say that because CBC will never hire you again. Yeah. And it you know, just over and over again where your esteem and and just, I do, even coming back now, I go, okay, now I, I remember this now why I moved away. I didn't move away to be a star. I moved away so I could get paid yeah. <laughs> and get unemployment insurance mm -hmm. and get treated well because it takes away your, your soul. And to be seen as a real job, like that's a big problem just in entertainment in general. A lot of times I've been told, it's like, well, this is a cool job, so everybody wants it, so you better do it for no pay. <laughs> like, yeah. Okay. But yeah. yeah. But when it comes down to it, like, this is your job. Like, yeah. You pay me. <laughs> yeah, like right now, there's been a lockout with actor for 19 months with commercials. Okay, 19 months. And we don't get unemployment insurance up here. Yeah. So they've already busted the union in Vancouver. There's no union working commercials out there. This makes me want to cry, okay? I, and, and then here, 19 months of people, have, they're losing their houses. They've gone to teaching. They've lost everything. We're not talking about small advertising agencies. We're talking about McDonald's. And, 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 and we're talking about Canadian Tire, Nation Our Block, and Wendy's. And so that they can come and just say, oh, um, we're just not going to pay union rates anymore. And, you know, and if we do hire a union actor, we're not going to pay the fringe. Hmm. Really? So I said to the union, hey, why don't you ask SAG to come in? Because those advertising agents, they need George Clooney. They need you know, Brad Pitt to do their Nespresso commercials abroad. Yeah. You know, just be a little bit more American on, on this. Mm -hmm. And also, let's get this out in the press and let's get the government involved because you are busting the union. Your bus, that's, it should be against the law. That's it's been good. 19 months. Yeah. Yeah, because like, what are you supposed to do in the meantime if that's your income? It's like, I'm not going to go work at the mall. <laughs> they are. Yeah, they are working. Yeah, this is what happens to us. Yeah, it's awful. Yeah, and there's just not a big pool. Like, even the Screen Actors Guild during the strike, they've only been on strike since, like, well, the writers went out in, in, in March, okay? So it hasn't mm -hmm. been that long. There's such a huge union. They, they have a bunch of money to subsidize the actors. They're helping people. You know, the only free thing that we have, that's at least we have our health care, that yeah. down there they're losing their health care, but we, at least we have that, you know, the actors. But it's not, it's not our union helping us with that. Yeah, but it breaks awful. my heart. It's, it, yeah. it, it's like that's not right. It's yeah. awful, and you don't have to yeah, move there. Like, there's plenty of problems in the States that we don't have. But, yeah, like, which you choose, like, which is the worst? Well, I do say, people say, oh, God, how can you stand the weather up of that there? And I go, you know what? Snow, hail. Mass shootings, yeah. drive-by shootings. <laughs> you know, my, my son, and mm -hmm. I lived on the west side, he went to a Santa Monica mm -hmm. school. By the time he was, t you know, 10, he'd already had 10 lockdowns in his school. Now, what kind mm -hmm. of, so it normalizes it, and that cut, they, they, mm -hmm. these people are carrying that kind of trauma around. Yeah, as you kids know? that you're getting used to hiding under your desk when you're five. Well, that was for the, uh, what was that, for the atomic bombs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Open yeah. your mouth. So my son <laughs> learned a protocol of what to do during a lockdown. Yeah. What, so that create, you're always, I feel more on edge there when I'm there all the yeah. time. Yeah. I do, I love that I'm here and I, I, I take the, I can ride a bicycle in Toronto, Toronto wear a dress while I'm doing it. Yeah. I can take the subway mm -hmm. at 11 o'clock at night and I don't have to worry, I don't, I don't feel threatened as a woman. Mm -hmm. Same. Yeah, yeah. I live downtown. People, like, you walk at night, and like, there's always people around. Like, it's not like yeah, certain areas where you turn a corner, like. Look yeah, out. there's also <laughs> enough. There's also enough police per, per yeah. capita. I mean, we there, there, like in Los Angeles, they just don't have the tax base, and so I became a very sloppy driver, like with you know, like <laughs> rolling stops, and because there's just no, no police no, around. Which that's a problem that they are finding that in Toronto. I live there as well. It's like yeah, they, there's been a lot of people that have left or just like aged out, and then yeah. COVID, and now it's yeah. like we don't have enough officers to do what we need to do. Yeah, so it's, it's definitely a changing world. Like that's an anti-police world in a lot of ways. So yeah, <laughs> the last few yeah. Years. So yeah, it changes the way that communities work, and it's like all it changes. It does change the way people <laughs> behave. Yeah.